go for long, so 20 seconds to go. Let's listen in. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. seconds into flight we are feeling the rumble we are seeing 33 out of 33 raptor engines ignited on the super heavy booster booster and ship avionics power and telemetry nominal acquisition of signal corpus christi we're continuing to get good call outs our trajectory Matthew. looking nominal systems looking nominal just amazing to see all 33 lit up once again At this point, we've already passed through max Q, that maximum dynamic pressure, and passing supersonic, so we're now moving faster than the speed of sound, getting those onboard views from the ship cameras. Now, the, the next major milestone is going to be a hot staging maneuver. Again, we're going to be doing that in just about 90 seconds. To do that, we're going to shut down all but the three center Raptor engines on Super Heavy. That'll be our Miko, our most engines cut off. And then the clamps holding the two stages together are going to release. Starship second stage will ignite its engines, the RVAX first, the sea levels right after that. The sea level engines will be splayed or just kind of pointed out at about a 15 degree angle Booster so if you look close and we get good tracking you might be able to see those center right after and so those six engines will push starship off of the booster all right counting down now we're going to be coming up right at around the three minute mark on that hot staging maneuver Again, we'll see the booster engines start to shut down. You'll see all but three lights go out in the middle. And then we'll see the engines ignite on ship, pushing it away. And that will start carrying the ship into space. Booster will start to do its flip and then move into the boost back burn, setting it up for eventual splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Hot staging confirmed. Boosters now making right, its way signal. back, yeah. seeing six engines ignited on ship. Kate, we got a Starship on its way to space and a booster on the way back to the Gulf. Oh man, uh, I need a moment to pick my jaw up from the floor because these views are just stunning. Uh, these are live views from Starship. Uh, first stage is currently performing. The ship boost avionics, power and telemetry nominal. Good there, news informing us at the second stage or the ship, everything looking good, nominal there. First stage is currently performing the boost back burn, expecting that to last about one minute. That boost back burn, uh, that boost back burn propels the booster back towards the coast, taking it to a landing in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we're uh, only using the super heavy boosters, 13 center engines from here on out. Uh, as whenever they relight, you'll be able to see that in the left bottom corner. Uh, those are the ones that can gimbal. In other words, they move and change direction uh, in order to change the thrust to steer the first stage back to Earth. Wow, these are just incredible views coming to us. Everything is looking good for both the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen or the super heavy booster as well as on the right-hand side of your screen, that is Starship, or we also refer to that as the ship.
Now, the boost back burn uh, was the first of two burns required to return it to Earth. The next one will be the landing burn, where all 13 center engines will initially ignite and then transition into a three engine burn uh, to help slow it down. Now, just as a reminder of the stage one test objectives, uh, we're looking for controlled ascent, which we have so far, uh, stage separation, which gorgeous, we cruised right through it, uh, as well as- on a nominal trajectory. Good news there telling us that the path that Starship is on uh, is good. Now, Starship's second stage is still firing its engines, and as you heard, following planned flight path, uh, the ship objectives, we're looking for hot staging, again, cruised right through that. We're looking to demonstrate controlled ascent as well as orbital insertion. Now, the bottom right-hand corner of the screen shows the ship uh, engine graphics, so be sure to keep an eye on those. Yep, Kate, like, this is just a, a phenomenal test so far. Super Heavy is performing beautifully today. It's on its return leg of the journey ship continuing to burn its six engines, those larger circles, the Raptor vacuum engines, the inner circles, the uh, Raptor sea level engines. We're ab about 30 seconds away, uh, oh, just under 30 oh, seconds oh, away oh, from the start of the boost back burn. Uh, excuse me, the landing burn on the booster. You can see the grid fins are rotating. Those hypersonic grid fins are guiding us through the atmosphere back towards our splashdown site. Again, we're going for a hard, uh, for a splashdown, a soft splashdown. So for landing burn, we're going to expect to see the 13 center engines light, rapidly bring down the booster's velocity, and then just the three in the center for splashdown. Let's see if that'll work. We're getting a few, a few engines. And acquisition of signal. Let's we'll see if we can get some other video of that. Now, uh, this is a test objective today. It is still something that we're attempting to learn. Um, and to make it that far to demonstrate the controlled re-entry up to that point is pretty darn good. Ship continuing to look nominal with its ascent burn. This burn lasting uh, about six minutes total. And we're expecting that this burn will end uh, just after T plus eight minutes, about a minute from now. So far though, I mean, Congrats to the team. Making it this far is farther than, we, than we've gone Absolutely. on flight two. Just wonderful views and great engine performance from the vehicles. So far we've hit controlled ascent. We're in the middle of that right now. We demonstrated the hot staging, Kate, as you said, cruised through that. Uh, we demonstrated controlled entry of the, the booster. Just yeah. dropped a little short of the engine relay, but hey, that's something we can learn for the next one. Yeah, now that view that we just had moments ago was a live shot of Star Command. There you see it again. This is uh, our mission control center at Starbase, uh, where vehicle operators are standing by. Now the next milestone coming up uh, is in less than a minute. Uh, at that point, ship will, or I'm sorry, it actually it already has. Um, ship engine cut off. There we go. <laughs> have successfully shut down. We heard a call out for nominal orbital insertion, which is incredible. Look at these views, Dan. Uh, I'm just completely blown away right now. Uh, what a day. Congratulations to the entire SpaceX team. I mean, this, this flight pretty much just started, but... <laughs> We're farther than we've ever been before. We've got a starship, not just in space, but on its coast phase into space. Just to recap where we've come, and it's only been nine and a half minutes. How has it only been nine and a half minutes? 
We lifted off right on time at uh, 8.25 a.m. We didn't have to hold at our gate at all. We had 33 out of 33 Raptor engines open up uh, and light and get us through a nominal ascent. Another successful hot stage. All six engines on the ship propelling us into orbit. We did see a no uh, what looked like a nominal boost back burn. Uh, and then we did make it all the way to the landing burn this time. Didn't light all the engines that we expected, and we did lose the booster. Uh, we'll have to go through the data to figure out exactly what happened, obviously. Um, so we'll be on the lookout for information about that. But uh, wow, uh, a ship in space. We've got a bunch of, as we said, ambitious objectives ahead of us. Um, over over the next couple of minutes and pretty much over the next hour where we're going to really, we've got the ship in space, we're now going to take advantage of this and try and learn as much as possible about some of the other systems, uh, including that first ever Raptor Relight in space. So it's just going to be incredible. So all of that still to come. The mission just started, but wow, uh, what what a liftoff, what a what a hot stage, what, a, what an amazing sight to see Starship there in outer space. I, I can't believe we're seeing it in, in <laughs> space. This is awesome. Wonderful. And now we are going to be coasting for uh, the next about 30 minutes or so. <laughs> we'll be back around the T plus 40 minute mark. And that'll be uh, Starship continuing to coast, hit those ambitious test objectives, and then continue on to reentry. We're not totally sure what video that we'll get since that normally comes to us as we overfly ground stations. And we, we don't have a ton of those along our trajectory. But as we have video, we'll be sure to bring that to you. Starlink may be able to bring us additional communication path today that will allow us to talk to Starship through re-entry with no communications blackout period. Uh, it's a possibility, but either way, we will be live for all of today's milestones. And of course, when we do have views, signal, Puerto Rico especially like the ones that we have now, which I just cannot get over. Uh, when we have views, we will be sure to bring those to you live. But no uh, views or no views, we'll see you back here at T plus 40 minutes. Pez door is opening. And there we just heard call it that Pez door is opening. So that's great. First test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of our test objectives today is to open and close that Pez door. That's where we will deploy Starlink satellites from in the future. So great news there that that test object, uh, uh, excuse me, that test objective is already underway. So come back here, uh, stick around till T plus 40 minutes for coverage of Starship's deorbit burn uh, demonstration, followed by its reentry and what is sure to be an exciting splashdown. Starship's flight computer is in propellant transfer demo. Starship flight computer is in the propellant transfer complete state. Pez checkout complete, door is closing. Uh, Re-entry is going to be a really critical phase of flight. Uh, we really want to know how the ship's going to perform, especially that heat shield as we're going through the hypersonic re-entry. So if something were to go wrong during this re-entry, we want as many paths as possible to collect that information, that data, just to, again, just continually feed back uh, into star the Starship program to make each flight more reliable, more successful. Acquisition signal, Mauritius. Now, if Starship manages to make it all the way through re-entry, we'll collect valuable data on Starship flying through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, meaning uh, more than five, or at this point, will be more than five times the speed of sound. Now, we're watching these live views, uh, HD views by the looks of it, thanks to Starlink. Uh, you can see that the flaps there on the ship might be actuating. Um, Certainly some incredible uh, visions of planet Earth behind Starship. Now, uh, we've already validated Starship's ability to fly uh, and land at subsonic speeds. You might recall those suborbital flights from a few years ago, and we can see those 
claps there. So getting data on aspects like heating and control while traveling way faster than we did before is going to be critical to eventually bringing starships back from space for rapid reuse. So I mentioned those flaps. That's one of the things um, that, that enables Starship to help control itself and, and, and survive the heat of reentry, which like we said before, we're expecting that reentry to occur around T plus 49 minutes. Uh, so we're uh, pr getting pretty close here. And what you're seeing here, it looks like the vehicle is sort of moving back and forth. Part of what you're also seeing is one of the cameras, this onboard view that we have, is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and, and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those. And, oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are Views brought still, to you by Starlink. Yeah, the Starlinks <laughs> are still communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the, the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kate. And, and it's important to note, with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities. Even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory, so the heating and the loads that Starship is going through right now are what it would be getting if it were recovering from an orbital mission. And, and just the fact that we have views through entry, this is incredible. Yeah, again, this is the furthest and fastest that Starship has ever flown. And you can definitely tell by the, uh, the crowd here in Hawthorne. The heat shield tiles doing their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat chill tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. Yeah, now this was one of the critical, or, or rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today. Uh, we have never, like I said before, this is the fastest and furthest that Starship has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal heat shield tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a big favor here by... The atmosphere is actually doing us a huge favor here by acting as a braking system for Starship um, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And that's part of the reason why the flaps are so important. We're using the body of Starship and the drag from the atmosphere to slow us down from orbital speed but you want the vehicle to remain stable. You want those heat shield tiles pointed down uh, so they can absorb the heat of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and so that's the purpose that they are serving during the hypersonic phase and then again during the subsonic yeah, phase. Absolutely. So like we said, these views are being provided by uh, a couple of Starlink terminals that are, are positioned uh, on Starship itself. As that plasma builds, it, we're hoping that we can bring these views back to you. Uh, but you can see the telemetry there on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, if you watch closely, you can see the speed decelerating. Again, that's the friction um, of the atmosphere resulting in this plasma field, or excuse me, the blanket um, that is uh, potentially blocking the, the Starlink terminals right now. So we'll bring those views back to you if we get them. But right now, for those of you that have recently joined, uh, Starship is currently re-entering Earth's atmosphere. This is super exciting because it's the furthest and fast, fastest that Starship has ever flown. It's just absolutely incredible. Major test milestone, something we wanted to accomplish on flight two, getting to it today. So just awesome. <sighs> And hey, Kate, and hey, Shiva, we were just hearing on the loops, we are making the call now that we have lost ship 28. So uh, as we were possibly expecting, we lost the data a couple of minutes ago. We haven't heard from the ship uh, up until this point. And so the team has made the call that ship uh, has been lost. So no splashdown today. Uh, but again, just it's incredible to see how much further we got this time around. We had a couple of those ambitious objectives that you guys were just walking through that we're able to take advantage of while Starship was in outer space flying uh, over our planet for the very first time. So that was 
uh, just really incredible. Um, obviously, there's a lot to go through. Um, everyone always wants to know right off the bat what happened. It takes us a little bit of time, uh, but I can assure you as soon as we start finding things out, we're going to let everybody know. Uh, and I know everybody's going to be excited, excited for the next one. I mean, as, as I pointed out at the beginning, there's four super heavy boosters either fully stacked or getting stacked right behind me. We've got other ships ready to go as well. Uh, so it's going to be a really busy time down here at Starbase as we look to really fly Starship as much as possible, get this vehicle ready to go for all the important things it's got to go do.